You're listening to The Bible Guys, a podcast where a couple of friends talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Bible Guys. He's Chris, and I'm Jeff, and we have a great episode for you today. We do. We hope. We hope. We're going to do the best we can. That's all we do, Jeff, is just hope. We live in hope. We live in hope, and we try. We're we're tryhards. (laughs) We try really, really hard. Okay. Well, hey, uh, so today we have uh, an episode, the, or uh, uh, what do you call a segment, segment that yep. we think is uh, fun. We've done this, I think, one or two other times. Um, so today it's just called Guess the Gibberish. I wonder in post-edit if they could put the gibberish words on the screen for those watching uh, just to uh, just for fun. Okay. Well, we'll have to pass that on. And, and, and so we'll know, basically, the people watching right now will know, will know. whether they heard me. That's right. So uh, this is guess the gibberish, <laughs> okay, and yep. so what's going to happen is we're going to put up some ra- a string of random words, yep. gibberish. See if you can figure them out. Now, okay, I think that this is really an easy one for you because when we tried to figure out gibberish, we just went and got your last message that you preached, and that's what I'm oh, going to. Wow, that was that was, back was weak. Yeah, was that weak? <laughs> <laughs> you were trying. I, okay, I give you half a point. Okay, <laughs> half a point. Hey, half a point. They stack up, right? They okay. build up. All right. Okay. Uh, no, this is not from the message you preached. Here we go. Police do not touch. Police do not touch. Please do not touch. Yes. <laughs> wow. I heard myself say it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh this one's this one's the toughest one. Okay. Ike hot if rum mime hum uh. I'm not gonna remember all those. I can't repeat that. Say it again. Ike hot if rum mime. Hum uh. Say it fast. Ike hot if rum mime hum uh. I don't even have a clue. Ike hot if rum mime hum uh. I got it from my mama. That did not sound like that at all. That one's a hard one. That was terrible. I, re- uh, I rebuke that. I do not receive that. Yes. Th- this one is a little tough. Yep. Bin Joe Wad Shun. Bid. Yeah. Bin Joe Wad Shin. Bin Joe what? Wad Shin. Wad Shin. Bin Joe Wad Shin. Bin Joe Wad Shin. Bin Joe Wad Shin. Banjo watching? Binge watching. The the Joe is the problem. Oh. Yeah, binge watching. Yeah, that was a hard one. Okay. Why would they say Joe? I don't know. This one. Binjo watching. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, yeah, see, yeah, 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 is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't love this game. <laughs> I don't love it. It's not great. Day kin, day kin, one, four, thud, heem. Say it again. Day kin, one, four, thud, heem. Day kin, one, four, thud, him. Day kin, day kin, one, day kin, one. Taken one. Taken one for Thud Him. Don't know. Taken one for the team. Oof. That was a good one. That Is was. It, was it? Yeah. Gnome or missed her nice thigh. Gnome or missed her nice thigh? Gnome or Mr. Nice Guy? <laughs> yes, there you go. Okay, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, you got two out of the five, so that was a rough one. Yeah. Yeah, we should just move on. Yes, I think that was, a, think that so. was, uh, that was not one of our better moments. Let's pretend that didn't exist. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I vote. I vote we not do those again. One of the other things that uh, our listeners will learn if they listen to us long enough is if we can't win at a thing, we we don't want to do it again. That's right. That's right. That's right. It has to be to our advantage. We like to tilt the table our way. That's what we like. Yeah, that's funny. (sighs) Okay. Guess the gibberish. Well, today is seven more verses, and this is this is a kind of a sad uh, passage. It really is. Yeah. Well, this whole thing Um, is sad. Yeah, but this one. It's about Judas in uh, Matthew chapter 27, oh, he hangs where himself. Judas takes his life, right? In uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 3, which is the only passage that covers this idea, right? Today. Matthew's and, the only one. And it says, when Jesus, who had betrayed, or when Judas, I'm sorry, when Judas, who had betrayed him, realized that Jesus had been condemned to die, he was filled with remorse. So he took the 30 pieces of silver back to the leading priests and the elders. I've sinned, he declared, for I've betrayed an innocent man. What do we care? They retorted. That's your problem. Then Judas threw the silver coins down in the temple and went out to hang himself. 
the leading priests picked up the coins. It wouldn't be right to put this money in the temple treasury, they said, since it was payment for murder. After some discussion, they finally decided to buy the potter's field, and they made it into a cemetery for foreigners. That is why the field is still called the field of blood. This fulfilled the prophecy of Jeremiah that says, They took the thirty pieces of silver, the price at which he was valued by the people of Israel, and purchased the potter's field as the Lord directed. So, very sad ending to to a very conflicted life there, right? This guy who'd rejected yeah. Jesus, rejected everything that he'd seen. He he witnessed it at the same level that the others did, and he went, "Yeah, I don't know how he's doing it, but I don't believe in it." Did you ever wonder, like the Pharisees knew the scripture back and forth? Yes. Yes. Did they buy the potter's field? Because of the prophecy, or did they just buy the potter's field, like just not knowing the prophecy or not thinking, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, somebody points out 30 years later uh, when they're on their yeah. deathbed, hey, you do realize what you guys did is in the Bible, right? I, I would bet that they were, that they overlooked it. So they were obsessed with the law. But, you know, there are a lot of Christians, I know, I know Christians that are obsessed with the book of Romans, but can't tell you anything about the minor prophets. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, Cause they just don't read the rest of it. They get obsessed about their piece, the thing that they want to harp on the most and they don't know any of the rest of the Bible. Yeah. And, so, and so it could it, be that because they, it wasn't in the Torah. That's right. It wasn't one of the first five books of Moses that, uh, you know, they memorized the first five books. Right. And then they were familiar with the rest and perhaps they just didn't realize it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, or God blinded them from it. Yeah. So right. remember in Kung Fu Panda? Probably. Um, when, Not. uh, when the uh, when the when the uh, master Ugwe says that uh, Tai Lung is going to return, and then he gets so nervous, he sends a, a messenger there. But it's because the messenger went that actually he escaped. So he said, "It's uh, we we often find our destiny on the path that we choose to avoid it." <laughs> that's what that's what Master Ugwe says, right? <laughs> And so that's that's sort of like this right now, right? Self-fulfilling so, prophecy. Yeah, yeah, sort of that way, right? So it's like, did they do it because of the prophecy, or did it, or you know, in spite of it, or whatever? Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I have a tendency to believe that maybe you're right. Like they didn't quite realize. Uh, but it is interesting how this prophecy is so unbelievably specific. Right. Thirty pieces of silver, uh, which was valued by the people of Israel to purchase the potter's field. And yet, this is what they choose to do with 30 pieces of silver. Right. That's pretty strange. So, you know, it talks about yesterday when we were uh, discussing this trial. At that point, it was all the leading priests, and it was the elders of the people, and it was the teachers of religious law. Those were the people. So sometimes it's possible for us to be really, really, really focused on one part of God's word and just leave the rest of it. And it's why we need really good balance, right? It's why we need to understand the whole Word of God and how the Old Testament connects to the New Testament, how every book in the Bible points to Jesus, how everything about God's Word is important, right? Jesus says this, that every part of the Word of God um, is important for us. And so I think that in this case, they missed it because they they were teachers of the law. They knew the law, first mm -hmm. five books. They just missed out on so much more of the rest of the the Bible, it was there, plain for everybody to see. Right. They just didn't see it. So, you know, they did exactly what uh, what the Bible said that they would do. So we, let's let's just get this out of the way. We believe that, uh, unfortunately, that Judas is not in heaven. Yeah. Um, the book of Acts says he went to his place. Yeah. Well, and it also right. says that Jesus referred to him, uh, the yes. one headed for destruction. Yeah, the son of destruction. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, so, yeah, I have to believe that that's true. Um, and, and by the way, uh, it wasn't because he committed suicide that he went to hell. It was because he rejected Jesus as the Messiah. Right. Right. So and, and by the way, not as it, you know, it's, I mean, listen, trust me, I'm never going to be a person that, uh, uh, you know, justifies something as awful as taking your own life or even making light of it because. Right. Every life. It matters. Yeah, yeah, because right. that is definitely something I would never, ever do. Uh, but the idea that uh, a person would think that suicide would keep you from heaven is, in my very strong belief, incorrect. And the reason why is because the Bible doesn't say anything about that. 
and that would actually go against every scripture we know about salvation. So the Bible says there's nothing you can do to get you to heaven. There's nothing you can do to keep you from heaven, right? If, if, if you trust Christ. Right. And so uh, that belief system of taking your own life, uh, sending you to hell, uh, that belief system was invented. You can Google this on your own, but it was invented uh, because uh, let's just, let's just say it this way. It was, it was a, it was a uh, motivated out of fear, right? For, for like it involved persecution and it involved motivating people not to take their own lives uh, when they buckled it to deny Christ. So that's, that's how that was invented. Uh, and it was not invented by the Bible or, you know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't come from yeah, the Bible. Right. It was invented outside of that. And uh, also the only verse that people use to back up that belief is uh, they tried to quote the verse that says uh, there is a sin that you can commit. It's the unpardonable sin, right? There's, there's a sin that you can commit that, that, that is not forgiven. And, uh, and that's a whole nother sermon altogether, but that it's not, it's never listed what that sin is. And if you match it up against all the other scriptures about salvation, there's only two scholarly beliefs about that verse. Either number one, uh, Jesus is referring to maybe possibly a sin that could only be committed while he was there on the earth in person, that they rejected the Messiah in person. And somehow that's a different sin than you and I rejecting him today, which I don't believe is true. No. That's a, that's a, that's not a very right. widely accepted view, but it is a view that's out there. And the other view that's widely accepted is, uh, is rejecting the Holy spirit. Right. Right. So you reject the Holy spirit, you deny Christ, you, you don't choose to believe him. That's the unpardonable sin. Yeah. Rejecting the work of the Holy spirit and the work of the Holy spirit is to draw you to Christ, convict of your sin, draw you to repentance, draw you to faith in yeah, Christ. More right? accurately, that, that, that's yep. his, that's his job. So it's when you reject Christ. Right. That uh, so in this situation, he didn't go to hell because of uh, his suicide. He went to hell because of the fact that he rejected Christ. Right. Right. So he felt bad about his behavior. Sure. But that didn't bring him to a salvation moment in placing his faith in Jesus Christ. Right. Right. So it's possible to have a little bit of guilt about what you've done. But if you don't place your faith in Jesus Christ, then you know, you're not saved. Now, Acts 118. Uh, so sometimes there's a little bit of a of a. Again, you know how sometimes people like to try to say, oh, there's differences in the Bible, and that disproves them. I think it's the opposite. I think that the difference is, as long as they're reconcilable, the differences uh, prove the Bible, because right. it's different views of the same situation. Because they're not contrary. Situation. That's right. If you and I saw the same thing, uh, same event happen, we would describe it similarly, but we would probably see different things, right. because we're standing at different angles or whatever. Uh, we had other information available. So in Acts one eighteen, it says that uh, Judas after he had betrayed uh, Jesus. And he, he, it says in verse 17, Judas is one of us and shared in the ministry with us. But then it said that uh, uh, he, they bought a field with the money he received from his treasury. And then falling head first there, his body split open, spilling out his intestines. Ew. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's worse. So because of that, then the news of his death spread to all the people of Jerusalem, and they gave the place the Aramaic name, Akeldama, which uh, means field of blood, is uh, where that came from. So the um, uh, the reconciliation of those two things would be he hung himself, as it says here, and perhaps the branch broke or something, right? If he hung himself out over the edge of a cliff, um, he the branch breaks, he falls, right? And so historically, that's what theologians would say, is that both events happen. The hanging first, the splitting open second, mm-hmm. which is really, really gross. Well, I mean, and it, I mean, and so those of you listening to this this morning, too, good morning, yeah, good morning, right? <laughs> well, it's not too, it's not, too, it's not a stretch. It's not a stretch to, uh, you know, think about all the stories in the Old Testament, right? Remember when Joseph was in the dungeon and he was giving the, uh, uh, you know, the prophecy to the butcher and the baker, remember? Right. And he and he says to the or the cup holder, what was it? It was the cup holder and the baker, right? And uh, no, no, no. Yes, it was the cupbearer. It was the cupbearer and a baker, wasn't it? Anyway, it wasn't a butcher. But he, but he said to the baker, uh, yeah, the birds are going to come and they're going to eat of your flesh. And remember, it was just so mm-hmm. gruesome. Right. Right. And it's like, it's like uh, you know, remember Elisha calls uh, two bears from the from the woods to maul 40 kids for yeah. making fun of them because <laughs> right. he's a prophet of God. I mean, there's some, right. there's some pretty rough things, rough things that happen to people, yeah. you know, uh, you know, and I, I just don't, 
don't see how this is any different. Somebody who betrays Christ for his body, for something horrific to happen to the body afterwards, I would expect that actually. Right. <laughs> I really would. It's uh, it's well, and the the graphicness of it. You don't find the Bible being super graphic all the time, but there mm-hmm. are a few times when it is, and I think that's just another one of those evidences of the specificity of that specific event right. is is very significant. So um, <clears throat> the other one would be, I think it's interesting that these priests have no guilt. Yeah, you, what, what do we care? Right. So he comes and, and he says, you know what? Uh, I didn't mean to get him killed. I meant, he, meant to get him arrested. I was trying to ruin his reputation, I think is probably what it was, is I've decided Jesus is a scam. And uh, he's not the one I thought he was going to be. Very likely, Judas was one of those zealots, right? Because Jesus had a couple of zealots. Very li- There was some kind of motivation that Judas had for following Jesus that was not fulfilled, whatever that mm-hmm. was. And so all Judas saw Jesus as is some kind of do-gooder. He goes around, somehow he's doing these really amazing things things and people believe. And he says all these things that most of it I don't even understand. And he, he teaches nice things and the people sure do like him, but I'm done. I'm just, I'm done. I'm going to ruin his reputation. I'm going to get him canceled. Well, I think his intent was to get him canceled, not killed. Yeah. Well, I mean, right? th- well, and he also could have thought, Hey, the money's not going to come rolling in like it used to yeah. because he's seeing things turn, right. the tide's turning. So I have one more opportunity to cash out on this guy. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, the Bible gives us insight about Judas, and it says, remember when the woman broke the alabaster box? And he said, that woman, that, that money could have been uh, yeah. sold, or that perfume could have been sold, and the money given to the poor. And then it says in parentheses, but he didn't care about it. That's not why he said it. Right, he didn't care he, about the poor. Right, because he often stole money out of the Jesus' treasury for himself. Right. And so it gives us, you know, some insight about the fact that even during ministry, he uh, his motivation is making the money. So... Uh, you know, it's probably fair to assume that he viewed Jesus like a cash cow, right? right? Like, hey, I'm, I'm just going to make a little on the side. This is kind of cool. And and we've got the best trick in the book. And right. You, you remember the old, <laughs> sorry about the movie quotes today, but you remember the old show from the 70s, uh, Pete's Dragon? Yes. Uh-huh. Remember that? Uh-huh. Where, where, where uh, money, money, money by the pound, <laughs> right? They were, they were, they were shysters. They right. went from town to town, right? He, he says, uh, you, you, uh, he says something about you. I didn't want to go bald, but now my hair turned pink. And in the song, he says, "But it's so becoming." <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So, so these guys lose uh, the 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 Pharisees lose any sense of morality, except they won't take the money back and right. put it back in the treasury. Yeah, well, I'm not touching that because that's inappropriate. Right, right, right. It's inappropriate. So selling because it was against the law the Jewish law to use money, except money for murder. Mm. Apparently it's not against the law to murder somebody in their minds, but it is against the law to accept money for murder. So they knew that they gave it to him for murder. That's what they gave it to. They, they were selling him out. Now they've decided they're going to convict him, convict Jesus. And so Judas wants to give the money back and go, Hey, wait a minute. You know, he's a jerk, but he's not a, a, a an evil person. I don't want him killed. They say, well, what is that to us? We don't care. And then he throws the money at them. And then they're standing there. They're picking up the coins, 30 pieces, which, by the way, uh, 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave. Mm. That's right. So it's not a significant amount of money. It's, a, it's the price of a slave. And he, so they pick it up and then they go, well, you know, <laughs> they're so pious in this moment. It would be inappropriate for us to put this in the treasury. Right. Right. Isn't it so goofy? And isn't it weird how uh, even everyone's about to make a movie theme uh uh, reference in the mafia type movies, there's still a code. There's a family code. Sure. You, you know what I mean? These criminals, they do all yeah. these bad things, but don't lie to the family or right. whatever. Right? Right. right. And it's kind of the same thing here that they, they've developed their own sense of morality, their own sense of right and wrong. They're claiming it's the Bible, but, or God's words or the teaching of all of the teachers about God's words. And I think that this is where, the danger would be. And this is why we want our, our listeners to spend time in the word themselves and not just believe us, right? Is because much of the Pharisees and the, the teachers of religious laws belief system was not built on what God's words said. It was built on the words taught to them about God's word. And so the most important thing for you to do is to take God's word into your heart and mind on your own. Having some teachers is good. 
right? Um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, the book of Romans says. So hearing God's word being taught helps build our faith. But ultimately, you can only truly know what is true with your time in the word, the teaching of the Holy Spirit, those two things first, and then having Bible teachers be a supplement to those things. Otherwise, I think we run the risk of the Pharisees, and that is we build in the, in the teachers of the law where we build these religious constructs that don't make any sense. It's okay to murder. It's just wrong to put the murder money back into the church treasury or the temple treasury, right? Uh, they build these weird religious constructs that make sense to them, but are not, you know, they're contrary to scripture. The bigger one, I don't know if you heard, but in the top 10, God's top 10 is don't kill. Yeah, I heard about that. Right? Did you hear about that one? Yeah. So I'm not sure what they're quoting about putting money back in the treasury, but it's not in the top 10. Yeah. Right? Uh, and so it's it's just one of those things. Spend time in God's word. Know it yourself. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. And then supplement that with people like us that are helping teach what the Bible has to say. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that looks like about our time. And I just have to throw this in there, too. You mentioned the Godfather. <laughs> and, and, and he's, you know, in the mafia, yeah, you know, uh-huh. and it's always family first. Yes. Uh, Godfather, too. And he says, I know it was you, Fredo. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, the brother. There you yeah, go. There you go. Do you, oh, you, just, wow. you don't you don't betray family in the Godfather. That's right. All right. Well, hey, that looks like it's our time, and we will see you next time, hopefully, on the Bible Guys. 